right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of North Kawartha Council. It's April 16th on a lovely day here in North Kawartha. And I'd like to uh, give a welcome to those that are joining us in real time, but also a welcome to those folks that may be viewing this meeting at a later date and time, because as you know, we record our meetings and we upload them to our YouTube channel. So also would like to remind folks that any comments or opinions that are expressed here will be recorded and available for the public at large to hear. Okay. And before we get into our business, Council would like to acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg, in particular our neighbours from Kawartha Anishinaabe and Curve Lake First Nations. We recognize and honour the original people of this place we call North Kawartha. As duly elected representatives, we follow this Indigenous practice of acknowledgement to foster respectful deliberations, thoughtful collaboration, and wise decision making in our service to this community. Okay, uh, pecuniary interest. Uh, does anybody have an interest with any of the matters that are coming before us today? Seeing none, we will move on. You guys know the rules, though, if you suddenly discover you've got one, you've got to declare it. Uh, adoption of the agenda. I do believe we're making one change, correct, Kelly? And that is with respect to the closed session. I think there was a tentative item listed on there, and it's not tentative anymore. It's going to be, it is for personnel matters, staff matters. Okay, right, so we're going to make that change. Um, can I have a motion then to adopt that agenda, please? Moved by Ruth Ann, seconded by Jim O'Shea. All those in favor? The agenda has been adopted. And without further ado, I will declare that we are going into a statutory public meeting for the purpose of hearing a shoreline road allowance application here today. And uh, this is an opportunity for... Um, folks to come before us to uh, request a purchase of road allowance applications and it's also an opportunity for members of the public to provide comment on that um, request and to help uh, council make uh, make a decision on that so um, I think that's everything uh, Janet if I've missed anything in terms of the, the legal ease that I need to say can you please fill it in but otherwise I'm going to turn it over to you Janet to take it away so good morning thank you good morning uh, council um, this is a uh, report is for the purchase of an unopened municipal road allowance. Um, and the recommendation is following the input received in the public hearing, council consider passing the appropriate bylaw to stop up, to close and sell to the abutting landowner or the respective nominees, those lands and premises described in Schedule A, which is the part road allowance lying between lots 10 and 11, Concession 15, Geographic Township of Burley, Township of North Kawartha being parts 1, 2, and 3 on Plan 45R-17581, being part of Pin 28289-0073LT, um, and this is the property at 391 Fire Route 89. Um, township has policies in place for selling unopened municipal road allowances to property owners. Um, in this case, all posting and notice requirements have been met. Because this is a purchase of an unopened municipal road allowance, uh, council's approval in principle is required. And this was granted back in July, uh, July 16th of 2019. Um, so it, it, it's showing on the map that's attached to the report. Um, I have received a written submission in regards to this application. I believe it has been provided to all of council. Do you, would you prefer me to read it out loud or has everybody had a chance to look at it? I think it's fine, we've all read it. We could certainly maybe speak to some of the, the questions that were raised. Okay. So I have had correspondence back and forth with the author of the letter, um, trying to explain the difference between what a shoreline road allowance is and what a municipal road allowance is. Um, her concern, one of her concerns is that we're selling a shoreline road allowance that isn't allowed to be sold. Um, she shows it as uh, blue on the diagram she provides we cannot sell that to uh, the fellow who is buying the unopened municipal road allowance until he actually owns it 
then it will be Shoreline Road allow it's in front of his property and then he can apply to purchase that. Um, they say that the staff report does not address how, how this proposed sale is in compliance with the policies. As far as I can tell, it meets all our, our policies. Staff went out and viewed the property. Um, we did a report to council, got the approval in principle. Um, so as far as I can tell, we've done everything that we should there. It is broken down into parts. The property's owner is purchasing part one, two, and three. And I will point out that part two, the reason it was surveyed this way and part two is segregated from the rest is uh, one of the utilities have indicated that there is um, their line is running there. Um, so that will have to uh, be taken into consideration before the final paperwork is done. And Mr. Ewart's office will provide whatever documentation and make sure that's looked after before the property is conveyed to, to the new owner. Um, let me see, got to look, scan through this letter. We are stopping up and closing this to sell to the property owner, which is one, uh, they one uh, same with whether it would be a, a municipal road allowance or a shoreline road allowance. They have uh, questioned uh, if there would be a future use of this property for a recreational trail. Um, I don't believe that is something that council is going to consider. That would have been consider considered uh, when we brought forward uh, for approval in principle. Um, I don't believe this particular road allowance has been used for public access to Jack Lake. I think there are many other areas that can be used for access to the lake. And I don't think we were looking for ATVs and snowmobiles and skiers to be able to use that part. Um, I have contacted the property owner on the opposite side of that property. They were fine with us selling um the road allowance, the unopened municipal allowance to the property owner. Um, and they didn't indicate it would cause them any hardship. Um, compliance with the zoning requirements. The road allowance will pick up the same zoning as the main property when everything is complete. Uh, circulation to federal and provincial agencies. Uh, we're not required by our policy to do that. Uh, for these types of purchases. And um, the cost of the road allowance was calculated based on the current policy. So as far as I can see, there really isn't anything in this um, request for, for a deferral of this application that we need to revisit. Um, but if council has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Janet. Um, I think before, oh, oh, if Jim wants to start, we can ask a question. I was going to go ask for public members, but Jim, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. I uh, I think it's important to um, uh, look at this in the proper light. Um, back in the 90s, we couldn't sell the road allowances, and uh, uh, we started back then to uh, bring forward a policy that we could sell road allowances. So we had to work with the MNR, and um, uh, the MNR was very, very good. Uh, their planner was was excellent. Um, we brought forward a policy, and um, it was appealed, um, and um, uh, finally it went to the OMB. And the basic wording you see on all of it today is is OMB. Uh, so. Uh, um, the, it's been touched up a couple of times, but other than that, it's the same as the OMB approved in the first place. And uh, uh, Janet has covered very, very well um, all of the aspects of that letter. Um, uh, and um, uh, I, I don't ever remember us uh, going to ever any provincial or federal agencies after the MNR gave us the approval and the OMB gave us the approval. So. Um, just, just, just the background that I think is very important for everybody to know, Madam Chairman. No, that was great. Thank you, Jim, for that. Um, okay, I would like to um, give an opportunity um, for any members of the public to speak on this, either in support of 
or in opposition to this. As uh, Janet outlined, we did receive one written letter um, with those comments that she has addressed. But I just want to see if there's anybody here. I know there's nobody physically in the in the gallery here today, but if there's anybody online, and I'm not seeing any indication that anybody wants to speak on this application. So I will then go back to council and uh, for any other questions or comments that you may have, or perhaps you are prepared to make a motion. Anyone? Oh, Jim O'Shea and then call. Um, question about the property itself. I noticed the line uh, that is adjacent or near to Jack Lake. Uh, seems to be behind the shoreline road allowance. Uh, when the people buy the municipal road allowance, will they uh, have direct access to the purchase then of the shoreline road allowance? Janet? Um, okay, um, the answer to that question would be, be yes, they would have the opportunity to purchase that, provided it's not drowned land. We don't sell lands that are underwater, um, but that would have to be resurveyed at that point to be a part number on a registered plan before we could sell it. But yes, it is possible that they could proceed to do that in the future. So in other words, uh, this application is only for the municipal road allowance. Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay, next question. The utility line that uh, is angled uh, across the property, uh, does that usually cause a difficulty in selling the property? No, not at all. We often, um, Euro Dwyer checks each road allowance that we're selling, whether it's a shoreline road allowance or an unopened municipal road allowance, they check with Hydro One and they check with Bell. And if there is an easement required, they work that out for us and do the appropriate paperwork. Sometimes we have to you know, sign some documents in that regard, but it's all worked out before the road allowance is conveyed to the new property owner. Thank you. Okay, Colin. Yeah, so I think I mentioned it the first time they were discussing this, but I have been out to the property and it is very steep, very rocky and would not really be appropriate for a walking trail or anything yeah. of, of the such. So um, I don't have any issue with the sale of this property and would move the recommendation if there's no further comments from council. No, I think that's good. Uh, Colin's going to move the recommendation. Um, anybody would like to second that? Ruthann will second it. All those in favor? That has been approved. All right. Thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. Do, and I actually have to do the bylaw afterwards. Uh, Kelly, can you read that out for us, please? Bylaw to stop up, to close, and to sell to the abutting landowners for their respective nominees those lands and premises described as part Ardell line between. Lots 10 and 11, Concession 15, Geographic Township of Burley, Township of North Kawartha, being parts 1, 2, and 3 on Plan 45R, 17581, being part of PIN 28289-0073LT. Okay, and uh, can I have a mover for that bylaw, please? Moved by Colin, seconded by Jim Whalen. All those in favor? And the bylaw has been approved. Okay, thanks very much. And now I will declare. Did I, did I do already do declare? I'm going to declare we're at a statutory public hearing. Oh, maybe I've done it twice. <laughs> um, and we will move on. Okay, it's the county report. Jim, what's going on at the county? <laughs> well, we know something's coming up on, on the consent agenda, but Jim, what do you got? Something's coming up, but... Um... At the uh, last meeting, um, uh, we passed a customer service policy, and yep. um, um, I had brought this up to the clerk before, and uh, I think she's working on it for us to have one as well. Um, it, it's really good, and I, I think um, it'll help solve some problems that we have um, if we uh, if we get it and we approve it. Um, uh, the new the, tomorrow we're going to be hearing about children's services. Um, um, 
and the uh, child care growth and so on and so forth. So I, I don't know exactly what all that is, but um, we'll be finding out tomorrow. Um, the awards for all of the places have been approved and the people should be uh, uh, should know by now uh, whether or not they're, uh, uh, they were approved. Um, and I don't want to say anything about anything about anything who was approved because I'm not sure if it's public yet, but um, maybe Carolyn would know that. And we're going to be discussing a watershed plan tomorrow. So other than that, that's uh, <coughs> my share of the report. Okay. Good. No, I was just going to add a, a couple of things. Um, yeah, I think I believe all of the uh, successful nominees for the awards have been notified. So it's not publicly coming from us, maybe, but it's certainly coming from them because I've run into a couple of folks who are, who are pretty happy, pretty thrilled. Um, but uh, and also, and we're going to discuss it through. Um, I want to pull it out of the consent agenda is to talk about um, the healthcare needs assessment. Um, we had a presentation from Lori Ritchie at our last meeting to talk about what she's doing as the healthcare advocate for the county um, and for all the townships. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, yeah, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll report back after tomorrow's meeting if anything exciting happens. So any questions or comments? If not, a motion to receive the county report, please. Moved by Colin, seconded by. Nobody? Or you're frozen. Oh, Ruthann, good. <laughs> my, my, I apologize, my screen's kind of freezing a little bit here. Uh, so moved by Colin, seconded by Ruthann. All those in favor? That has been received. Crow Valley Conservation Authority report, Colin. Okay, so we're going to be meeting this Thursday. Uh, so we'll have a much more wholesome report next time that we uh, okay. get together. But it's uh, agenda rich with <clears throat> potential policy changes. So Ooh. I'm very much looking forward to the meeting and I'm looking forward to reporting back after it. Okay, all right. So no report then. Um, and adoption of the minutes of the previous meetings of council. And uh, that was the meeting that was held on April 2nd. Jim O'Shea, you'll move to adopt that? Okay, seconded for that. Anyone? Oh, Jim Whalen. <laughs> All those in favor? Those minutes have been adopted. Okay, so now we're on to our consent agenda. And um, before uh, we receive anything, I just wanted to make note that I did want to pull out um, number two, number five, and number seven. Number two and seven are linked, just for some discussion. Um, just to kind of highlight, but is there anything else that anybody wants to, to touch on from the consent agenda? If not, then uh, first, and then I'll, how about we'll do two and seven together. I just wanted to highlight this for folks. Um, every year, um, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks has the Provincial um, Day of Action on Litter. It's May 14th. And um, Gary did provide a, a report on here about some of the things that the township does to support those folks. There are a number of different folks and organizations and groups that do kind of do their kind of you know roadside cleanup, that kind of thing. Um, I see Gary, you popped on there. Did you want to speak to it or just in case there's questions? Good morning, Madam Mayor and Council. I'll just um, quickly summarize, just, just to let sure. Council know, we often do have individuals or even groups that approach us that do roadside cleanup often in the communities in which they live and around the areas in which they live and sometimes they don't do this to coincide with any specific date or you know they don't do it with a lot of fanfare they just they just want to go out and do it and help so when they do approach us we always provide clear garbage bags at no cost we uh, always accept that garbage at the transfer station at no cost if they don't tran if they have no way of some of them just transport it to the transfer station. If they don't, they let us know where they're going to leave the bags and we go by and pick them up and we take them to the transfer station. And sometimes we uh will provide them with the safety vest as well, too. So um this happens throughout the year. Sometimes um, you know, it'll coincide with Earth Day in April or um and this year, what I'm suggesting is for the Action Day, uh, the Provincial Day of Action on Litter on May 14th, we just do the same thing again. Um, we, you know, let people know that we'll provide clear garbage bags for free. Uh, we can pick those garbage bags up at the location if they let us know. Generally, they let us know where they are. Um, 
and we can pick them up and transport if they don't want to transport them themselves. I'm not sure we can provide safety vests. Uh, we don't have a huge supply. Um, and again, depending upon the number of requests we get, and, and sometimes uh, it may be difficult in getting the vest back. So, uh, and a lot of people that do this actually have their own, especially the walkers have their own vests and so on. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to, just to let people know that this does happen on, on somewhat of a regular basis throughout the year. Okay, that's great, Gary. And I think it's uh, uh, important to you because I'm hoping to do a little um, a little video with our uh, our local grade eights from our local school here. Um, they always do cleanups around Earth Day, and um, I figured it'd be an opportunity to kind of highlight their activities, but also you know mention and let people know that this provincial day of action does happen. And here's some of the things that the township will do to support. So it's just a way to highlight some of those uh, activities. And as you know, from the spring when everything melts and you see all the stuff in the sides of the road and everywhere, it's, it's nice to go out and get a, do a spring cleaning. So anyway, that's why we have the, that, uh, those two things that were on um, the uh, consent agenda. And the other thing is the Your Health Matters Healthcare Needs Assessment Launch. There's a news release on there. And like I said, Lori Ritchie, recently hired by um, the uh, the county to be, um, I can't remember what her actual title is, but it's a healthcare advocate basically for for the county and for the different municipalities, which is really, you know, it's the first time that we've really ever had um, something like that, where there's an advocate for, you know, each municipality to, to work with them to figure out what their healthcare needs are for their residents and their community members that have a made, you know, sort of a tailored approach to them and it makes a lot of sense but this one is really important um, I think we've already started sharing this information through our communication channels but for folks to understand um, that uh, they need to go and check out this uh, assessment fill it out um, and this will also become the official list for those that are, are in need of primary care in need of a family doctor so um, it's a big push in terms of uh, the communication to get this out to make sure that people have uh, have access to this if you don't have um, access to the internet you can't like get the the um assessment form online you can there's a number that you can call as well to um to be able to uh, get a copy of that uh, form too so colin did you want to speak to it as well yeah just very briefly clicking through all the links i noticed that um, it will be used as a tool to gauge the demand of a township yeah um, so it is imperative that we get this out to everybody to be yep. filled out um, because if it's going to be run through a county-wide system, um, there will be some natural competition. So uh, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to get those filled out. Yeah, and it's not just for those folks that don't have primary care. I mean, I filled it out. I mean, it's just they just they're really trying to they get a snapshot of what's you know occurring you know throughout the county. So certainly at the like at the pharmacy, at the doctor's office, and all of our public buildings, like, wherever we can get the get this information displayed and out there is really key and just talk it up with anybody that uh, that you're meeting to say, hey, you know what, take a moment and check it out and please uh, and please share uh, share some feedback so we can have a, a fulsome, you know, understanding of the big picture, basically, of what the health care needs are in the county. Okay, um, so that's it. That's all I had to, to discuss uh, or pull out for the consent agenda. So if there isn't anything else, can I have a motion for us to receive the consent agenda? Please. Moved by Colin, seconded by. Oh my gosh, I think everybody's frozen again. Somebody put up their hand. <laughs> Jim O'Shea's way to move in. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to say Jim O'Shea second. So I'm going to have to go off and pull this computer because mine <laughs> keeps freezing. Um, so moved by Colin, seconded by Jim O'Shea. All those in favor? That has been received. Okay. So, oh, is it moving up there? Okay, I'm, I've got my eyes going and to cross, I'm going in different directions. Okay, so Gary's still on the screen, which means he's got a report coming up right next, and it's Township Health and Safety Policy Update. So Gary, please go ahead. Good morning, it's Jim, Madam Mayor and Council. I'm going to try to uh, pull my things together here. Um, oh, I grabbed the wrong uh, report. I apologize. So what you have uh, before you is just a, um, a brief report on Township Health and Safety Policy updates, uh, thanks to the Joint Occupation and Health and Safety Committee and Keely Ann Johnson, who is the co-chair and the employer, uh, sorry, and the employee. Uh, um, 
we had a meeting, we reviewed some of our required um, annual policies, and we have a couple of recommendations for council. There will be another recommendation forthcoming. So the current recommendations in front of you are to recognize and approve the amended uh, sorry, township health and safety policy statement. We made one change, a uh, small change um, to the health and safety policy statement. Actually, that change uh, was caught and recommended by Keelan, and it was changed. Uh, was changed a word company in the third, in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph to Township of North Kawartha. So we would like to count council to once again recognize the uh, policy statement and to approve it uh, running through to the end of the term of council, at which time uh, we review it annually. Um, but again, it should be approved uh, to run uh, concurrent with each term of council. And then the second recommendation is to suspend the current township vaccination policy. So without reading the report, um, our vaccination policy, of course, we created uh, for COVID. Uh, it uh, it was very effective. Um, it, it I don't think it's worth getting rid of. Uh, we could need it again in the future in a different form. It could be updated. Uh, it could be required for something else. But currently, I think that uh, it would be prudent to suspend the policy as it is. And then the violence and harassment policy, uh, we're currently, we've we've made a couple of changes. We're taking it back to the committee. And then uh, once those changes are approved by the committee, we'll bring that forth to council as well, too. Okay, thanks, Gary. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Colin? And just to confirm with the different line between the suspension and repeal, um, once suspended, um, if it is amended or needed again, will that come back through council to be reinstated? 100%. 100%. In order to uh, bring it back, um, amend it, um, as you just mentioned, uh, Council McClellan, it would definitely come back to council. Okay. All right. There's no other questions. There are the two recommendations there. Anybody like to move them? Moved by Jim Whalen, seconded by Colin. All those in favor? That has been approved. Okay, thank you. And we have the um, administration. There's a correction to motion 24-34 uh, adopted on February 6th. Now this is Connie's report, but Kelly, are you speaking to it? Are you gonna be, be Connie? <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not okay, I can't ask it. You really are today. You are. <laughs> I can certainly speak to it. I'll sure. Pull up the report. Okay. Thank you. Jim, sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand up. Yeah, this this is a very simple report. Um, uh, it's just a matter of a couple of words. That's all. Um, um, when we adopted the um, motion 2434 on February the 6th, um, was put in there that the, the chair and the co-chair of the uh, 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 bylaw committee be appointed. <clears throat> or be you, myself and your, and Madam Mayor. Um, and um, actually the motion came out uh, that it was, um, um, I was the chair and you were um, a member of the committee and um, uh, somehow it got reversed. So this is just correcting what was actually in the motion. That's it. Good update, Connie. <laughs> he beat you to it but yeah no that's all that it is and yeah and it states it in the terms of reference that uh, the election of the vice chair is uh, done by the committee itself so anyway so this is a, a clerical error that's being um being fixed and it just uh, the recommendation is there to replace the words vice chair with the words as the other council appointment and further that an amending bylaw be adopted to reflect the correction so would anybody like to move that recommendation moved by call and seconded by ruthann all those in favor 
that has been approved. Okay. All right, and now we have reports from boards and committees, and there's two items under here. First is the short-term rental advisory committee minutes that were held on April 9th. Are there any questions or comments on those minutes? If not, can I have a motion to receive those minutes, please? Anyone? Excuse me, Matt. But when, oh. we approve, when we approve the minutes, um, are we approving the... Oh, we're um, the receiving money? them, pardon me. We're receiving them, not approving them. There's three options. Oh, no, no, I know that's the second part. We're, I, I, I separated it. I'm just, we're just receiving the minutes from April You're, you're separating them. Okay, sorry. Yeah, because it, that's okay. Um, but who was who was made the motion to receive? Was it Ruthann and then motion to receive? Any seconder for that? Okay, call it, we'll second it. All those in favor? The minutes have been received. Um, now we're going to talk about, um, there's the request from the short-term rental advisory committee. Uh, there's a funding request there. So who wants to speak to that? Anybody? Uh, Jim, go ahead. <laughs> Jim, uh, I'll, I'll speak to it. Um, the, um, um, they've got to stop spending money like this. Um, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, this is, this is crazy. Uh, that a committee out there would be asking for 135 bucks. So uh, I, I would move to approve it uh, with option one. Um, oh. <laughs> wait, we need to have a discussion. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait until we hear from some of the other people. Okay, good. Um, I was just, <laughs> excuse me, there are three options there. One of the things though that um, um, I was going to suggest is I do have a monthly column in the absolutely back roads and I would be more than happy to um, provide it and I can actually include it in this month coming up just to give people a heads up to say hey there's going to be a survey coming and then do another one, but that's no cost. So, I mean, that is the fourth option that I just included in my regular monthly update um, the advertisement for the uh, public survey. So just throwing it out there. It's like, what do you guys think? Oh, maybe just to try to get maximum reach one month, put it in the um, council corner, this one coming up, um, and then use it, advertise in the next month as the survey window will bridge that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, as I said, that's why I was saying, like, I could do it for both. Like, I could just do a heads up now and then actually put the advertisement in my council corner. Yeah. And would it be able to be highlighted and yeah. like sort of separated from yeah. the rest of okay because yeah. I've done it before with other things when we've advertised for different um surveys or different just notices and stuff like that I have included it so yeah that's okay. what I yeah so it would be yeah it would be special it wouldn't just be like a little bullet point okay okay that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted to go no I would make it special for sure I'd want it to stand out yeah no no I get it so okay so any questions or comments on that option <laughs> Jim Whalen yeah, there is. Um, um, everybody who gets the thing would see the ad, but uh, not everybody listens to your um, um, uh, video. <laughs> I, I, know, a, I hate to say that because you're so so <laughs> good on them and all that stuff, but um, I, um, I, I I honestly think uh, uh, if we're going to get any real results, we need to spend a little bit of money and get it get it out there um, in an actual order page ad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and or, whether it's quarter page or business card, it's also not the worst thing for the council <laughs> to be supportive of our local newspaper. So um, it, it, it's a good idea, I think, to have to advertise it, but also um, if possible to include it in. Well, I'm not going to highlight it then. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody listens to my council corner, according to Jim. <laughs> Okay, all right, Jim. What, oh, Jim O'Shea, sorry, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, if you want to draw direct attention and focus on the short-term rental, a quarter-page ad will be much more effective than reading it as part of an article. Um, having done this type of publishing work before, that's one of the kinds of things I always recommend it. As a direct you know, response to what's happening right now. Um, after it's been exposed to the public for one or two uh, publications, then I would say, yes, uh, 
part of the uh, mayor's report would be quite a f appropriate rather rather than continuing to spend money on a quarter page ad okay all right so who wants to make a motion <laughs> Go ahead. I'll make the, the first motion that we spend the 135 plus HST to do the quarter page ad. I think it'll be effective in getting the most people to respond. Okay, is there a second for that motion, please? Seconded by Coleman. All those in favor? <laughs> that is first. Okay, that's funny. I'm still going to include it in my reps, don't worry. <laughs> Just read that one person that reads them. <laughs> I read. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, okay, so now we are going on to correspondence for action. And we have a, a, a lengthy bit of correspondence here from, <clears throat> excuse me, the North Hastings Community Centre, dated April 2nd. It's a resolution with a request for a municipal pledge of $10,000 towards the North Hastings Community Centre. Who would like to start off? Anyone? Colin, go ahead. Oh, and then Gary, too. I see Gary. Okay. And you, so I know other municipalities um, sort of enjoy use of our community center, and I'm just wondering if we've made this same request to other municipalities. Well, then guess what, Gary? You go ahead and answer that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> although this is an interesting approach, uh, it is not commonplace. Um, you know, parks and recreation, albeit, is not a mandated service, uh, you know, within municipal governments. Over the years, that has become an expected, uh, you know, or required service, uh, parks and recreation. And, um, you know, again, it's not mandated like roads. It, uh, it, you know, I wonder how this would be received if, a municipality sent us a letter and said, you know what, you got 15% of your residents that drive on our roads. We want, you know, money to maintain our roads. Um, there's really not a lot of difference other than the fact that parks and recreation, unlike roads, is, is not a mandated uh, municipal service. So that being said, um, Councilor McClellan made an excellent point uh we have a lot of bancroft people that use our facilities and no we do not charge an out of town uh, fee and and we don't uh, go after any other municipalities um for fees because their users uh you know come to use our facilities a we welcome it uh we like the revenue and, and it keeps our facilities busy um as far as their report um i do have a couple you know, uh, how do you want to put it, questions on on some of the uh, uh, data that they came up with. Um, so what they're requesting for uh, from us here is they're stating that they have 2.5% of their users are from North Kawartha and 50% of their annual cost, they'd be looking for a $2,600 contribution or uh, an annual contribution of fifty two hundred dollars. I noticed in the um, on the agenda it said ten thousand. That might be an overall um, an overall contribution they're looking for, but that's what they're looking for from North Kawartha. And again, they're claiming that two point five percent of their users are from North Kawartha. Now, I can only assume that that two point five percent must be minor hockey players within their minor hockey system. What they have there, and again, this is no offense, I mean, but just for what it is, is, and I've, my kids have played in the Bancroft Arena for many years, is they have uh, an arena, um, they don't have a multi-use facility, let's say, like our facility, so again, I'm assuming that because there's no other data to support where this 2.5% came from, uh, we can only assume it must be minor hockey players in their system. And you might be surprised to know that any absolutely minor hockey players that go up to play in their minor hockey pay an out-of-town fee. So our players, that's 2.5%, 
are already playing an additional paying an additional out of town fee to play in um, Bancroft. Secondly, if that is the 2.5% they're referring to, those players are on a hockey team that they paid an out of town fee to be on that hockey team. The town's contract for the ice is with the team. It's not with the individual player that paid an extra fee to be part of that team. The town's contract and agreement is with the team. The team could go get ice anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be in, in Bancroft. Uh, secondly, in a lot of cases, if a couple of our players don't go up and play for those Bancroft teams, then they don't have enough players to field a team. And then if that team was to fold, then the town loses revenue for an entire team for an entire season. So rather than making a contribution of a couple thousand dollars, if those kids pulled out, I mean, they could be losing $10,000 in ice revenue. So, uh, as as you can see, um, I, I I it's it's an interesting <clears throat> concept, um, but I think that uh, there's a lot of holes in it. Uh, conversely, if we were to say, you know, let's look at how many Bancroft residents use the NKCC or or our sports programs, as an example, um, for a, as you know, we're a full service parks and recreation department, and unlike a lot of other municipalities, we provide everything: the sports programming the youth programming, the adult programming, uh, seniors programming, uh, fitness center, and a multi-use facility. So because of that, if we were to look at charging, you know, the other municipalities a fee for the residents to come here, it would be a lot larger than this 2.5% uh, uh, rate that they're uh, claiming here. It would be much larger than that. Um, so again, there's not a lot of data to support this 2.5%. I assume it comes from uh, minor hockey players, which already pay an out-of-town fee. And again, that that agreement with that team is with the town, not with the individual player. And conversely, we do not charge um, out-of-town people coming to the NKCC. As a matter of fact, we welcome it. Thanks, Gary. Um, just to add a little bit of information to that, I was actually up at the... Uh, the arena there uh, just a little while ago, they were doing their skating carnival and Elvis Stoiko was skating. So it was a uh, pretty good to watch, but I got to see the facility itself. And I did read through the package. There's a lot of information there and a lot of history. And, and I, I can understand and empathize with the challenges that they have with having an older building. And I think it was a, a commission arena commission that was overseeing it. And just some of the challenges, the financial hardships and everything. And I was looking at the registration for the different groups that use it. And you are correct, Gary. I, I'm not sure when that was implemented, the out of town fee, but I believe it is for, for hockey players, both uh, boys and girls, because they do have um, a girls team up there as well, who were do did very well, apparently. I don't know if they're still playing or not, but they've been kicking butt all over. Um, but um, one of the things, and I think this is where this request comes in, is they're saying, and because it, it says it right on their registration forms, is that if you're from out of town, you have to pay this fee. And um, if you want a refund, you can go back. So, so Bancroft Town folks, and I think Carlo Mayo is another municipality that has provided some financial support. Those residents can go back to their townships for show proof that they've paid this and they would get a refund back. So I think that's maybe where that's coming from too, is that they've implemented this. And, and But I don't think that we've had, I'm sure staff would have brought it up if somebody had come forward saying, hey, I'm paying this out of town fee. But I agree with what you're saying, Gary, at the end of the day. I mean, I we don't do that. We're not trying to create different sort of a, or a two tier system or a different, le like we want to keep the playing field level, I think when it comes to accessing our programs and our facilities. And, uh, and we certainly wouldn't want to do that on our end. We have our own arena that we need to support with our, uh, with our uh, tax dollars here. Right. So Gary. Excellent points. And, and what you said there just made me think of something that in the report, this concept I think is, you know, would work very well for a neighboring municipality that doesn't have the sport and recreation infrastructure. Yeah. So they want to provide that service through their residents, but they don't have the they don't have the infrastructure. And it's a lot easier for them to, you know, pay, let's say the town of Bancroft a fee and contribute 
um, so that their residents have access to those programs and it saves them from investing in that sport and rec infrastructure. So that's a totally different scenario like uh, Mayhew and in that situation there when the town already contributes to their um, so when Mayhew contributes to Bancroft, they can then go back and get the refund for the out-of-town fee. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it much, much different than, you know, going to another town that has, you know, a full complement of sport and rec, not only infrastructure, uh, but also programs as well um, that may even exceed the neighboring municipality. Yeah, I agree. And I think perhaps maybe when they were doing some of that um, data collecting, it came up because it shows Highlands East municipality there too. And I think they've got an arena. But um, uh, I think maybe just in terms of fairness, they were saying, okay, here's all the users. So if we figure it out, you know, by in terms of use or the percentages, this is the way it is. But I do think um, there are probably several municipalities within that that are exactly what you said, Gary. They don't actually have their own facility and they do utilize that. So like I said, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a it's a challenging situation, I think, for Bancroft. And knowing that that building is old as well, too, it's going to be needing repairs and that kind of thing. But um, but I think, yeah, I, I don't know, think that it's appropriate that we would make a contribution. As I said, we do have our own facility to support on that. So um, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I'm I'm looking for a motion. <laughs> Jim Whalen. Uh, thank you very much. Gary, I missed the first part of your report. Can you go through it again? <laughs> serious? <laughs> I'm going to be serious and we're not going to believe it. The only, the only thing I will say is that if we were to support this, it would then behoove us to send them an invoice for the yep. percentage of of their users that come here. I mean, if we're going to support that, well, then we obviously have to, it has to be a give and take. So I would hate to send them $2,600 and then turn around and ask for 26,000 in return. <laughs> okay. Madam, <clears throat> Madam Chairman, I, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we advise the uh, Hastings uh, Community Center Arena that um, uh, we will not be um, um, succeeding to the request and that uh, we think this is, um, uh, uh, no, just that we're not succeeding yep. to the request. Thank you. Yeah, the request for is, is denied. Okay. All right. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Ruth Ann. All those in favor? That has been approved. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thanks, Gary. Um, last item on the agenda, I need a motion for us to go into closed session pursuant to Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act. This part of the meeting is closed to the public as the subject matter being considered is B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and E, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. Who would like to make that motion, please? Moved by Ruth Ann, seconded by Colin. All those in favor? We are going into close, people. Thank you.